Alright. So we left off. Can I please have Marine? Torres, please come down to the main offices, Marine Torres. We left off on Friday kind of talking about the 1920s. Shows up here, guys. Um, and we were talking about the prosperity of the 1920s. It was a very real prosperity. Wages went up, cost of living went down, standard of living went up, unemployment was down. It was a, almost a 10 year period of really strong economic growth, uh, which have positively affected the lives of most Americans, farmers excluded. We talked about why farmers did not kind of. They were not doing well in the 1920s, but everybody else was. Uh, working class people, middle class people, upper middle class people, people are moving up the socioeconomic ladder. Um, restrictions in immigration play a role in raising wages. Um, so the 1920s economically were definitely boom times uh, for a lot of people. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is how that all ended. And we're going to be talking first about the stock market crash, and then how the stock market crash then led to the Great Depression. That these are different things. The Great Depression does not start with the stock market crash. That the stock market crash had effects that then created the depression, but they are not the same thing. We're going to look at both and see how the results of this, the consequences of this, led to the depression. Now, but before we do that, I want to, and I'm sure there are people, who can tell me what a stock is? Or is this kind of something that everybody kind of looks at me and goes, What is a stock? No, so what's a stock? I'm not really sure, but isn't it like, stores have to calculate how much of each item is in no, that, that's like, okay, that, that's, uh, that's the word stock in a different sense. Like, that's stock, how much of an item you have. Like, we have, we have plenty of mattresses in stock, but that's not stock like the stock market. That, that's a different stock. Hey. Uh, when you invest in a, in a certain business, and... That's when you invest in stock, so that doesn't tell us what a stock is. I have a question. A bond. A bond is an investment in government. Go ahead, Steph. What is a stock? It's a piece of a company. It's, it's all it is. It's a piece of a company. It's a piece of a company. How does this work? Let's use um, Anaya today. We're going to use a lot of you guys today. We're using Anaya. She's going to get the heart of this. Anaya produces, Anaya's, what does Anaya make? Chicken. Chicken. What do you make? Chicken. Chocolate bars, that's a good one. Chicken. Anaya's chocolate bars. You make chicken. Oh, raised chicken. Anaya is a producer of chocolate, which in our case actually is a perfect, perfect example of what we're going to do because chocolate, as delicious and yummy as it may be, is not a necessity. Uh, so chocolate is definitely one of those things that the demand for chocolate will fluctuate based on how well the economy is doing. That's a great example that we're going to use. So Anaya, Anaya opens up by herself one little store, Anaya's Chocolate Shop, um, and it attempts to attract customers. And because Anaya's chocolate is so tasty and delicious, um, she does very, very well. Here's Anaya's Chocolate Store. There's Anaya standing, you know, in the front door, very successful businesswoman. If she wants, now it is, it is natural, obviously, somebody comes into Anaya's store and says, Anaya, we love your chocolate, but we have to travel 20 miles to get it, and I'd really like it if the store was closer. Anaya, interested in satisfying this customer's demand, and interested, obviously, in making more money, what is Anaya going to do? Open the store. Open store. number two. Is that like a franchise? Brand? Uh, it's not a franchise. That's a different, okay. that's a completely different thing. So this is, both stores are owned completely by a guy. All the profit, she hires people, they make a salary, but all of the profit goes to a guy. 
Anaya's chocolate proved so tasty and so popular that Anaya finds that she opens a, a third and a fourth store. Now it's getting a little more complicated to run all this. So Anaya finds her friend Nelsie. <laughs> Nelsie has been managing this second store from the beginning because Anaya's kind of still here at her first store. And she says to Nelsie, Nelsie, you are on board with this company so early on. Instead of paying you a salary, Nelsie, since the company is doing so well, I'm going to put you in charge. I'm going to give you a stake in the ownership. I don't have to pay Nelsie a salary anymore. Now Nelsie gets a percentage of the profit. Anaya Mighty gets 80% and Nelsie gets 20%. Now the store, the company does just as successful and more. Anaya looks up and there's 25 stores. Once you have 25 stores, you're looking around for people to invest so you can make 25 more stores. You don't have, Anaya has 25 stores and she says, I'd like to open another 20 in a whole different state. To get money to do that, she talks to a bunch of her friends and says, will you go in on an expansion of Anaya's chocolate company? And Anaya says, I'll take 55% of the profit. Nelsie, kind of the second one in, will take 15. And then someone will take 10, 5, 5, 5. All of these investors, 5, 10, 15, 30, 40, 95. Now it's a company that's owned by how many people? Seven. Nelsie still controls most of it. Now she's got 50 stores. She's grossing, you know, several million dollars a year. She gets whatever the profit is, she gets 55% of it. So this year, her company made a $5 million profit. She takes home $2.5 million. Nice life. Nice life. Hard working. Nice life. But let's say, for example, that Anaya in this business model got up to 100 stores. But now she wants to expand to California and open 100 new stores. She does not have enough money to open a hundred stores. So what will she, where can she find money? One way to find money to open a hundred new stores is to do what? To turn her company from a limited partnership into a, a corporation. To incorporate her company publicly. Who is she going to sell it to? Everybody. The public. So let's say, for example, think of Anaya's chocolate company as a giant pie chart. Anaya owns 20%. All of her other original partners combine to own 30%, 31%. All little individuals. She's the largest owner. And now, in order to raise millions of dollars, she knows that her company will be successful when it opens 100 new stores. She just needs the money to do it. You have to make money to earn, you know, to, to, to make money, you gotta spend money. So she knows I need a hundred million dollars to open a hundred new stores in California. Who, where the heck is she going to get $100 million from? Well, she's going to get $100 million from millions of different people. She is going to take this 49% of her company and divide it into thousands, tens of thousands of little tiny individual pieces. Each one of those pieces is called a share of stock. And she will list her company on a stock exchange where anybody, she's going to say, the price of one share of stock in my company is $10. If you want to buy 0.0001% of Anaya's chocolate, it's $10. That's what you do when you buy a stock. 
you buy a tiny percentage of a company. You buy one stock, it's ten dollars. You buy ten stocks, it's a hundred dollars. You buy a thousand stocks, it's ten thousand dollars. You buy a million stocks, it's ten million dollars. A large company like Google or Coca-Cola has billions of stocks owned by millions of individual people. Now, how does a person make money? Let's take Jackie, for example. Jackie is now, Jackie is a small, tiny investor. She bought one share of stock. Maybe it's for a school project. I want a share of stock. Now, Jackie, Anaya, grows her company into California. The 100 stores open. It is a raging success. Everybody loves Anaya's chocolates. People are buying them. The company is getting more profits. Anaya starts thinking about another expansion into a foreign country. What happens to the value of the company? It goes down. It goes up. Oh. Well, why would the value of a company go down if everybody loves its product? True. The value of the company goes up. People are like, oh, geez, I want to invest in Anaya's company. But the number of stocks stays the same. This is a standard supply and demand. There are, this, there's a fixed number of stocks in Anaya's chocolate company. If the company is getting more valuable and more people want to buy stock, what happens to the price of the stock? It, it goes, goes up. up. So how does Jackie make money on stocks? Well, it's very simple. She bought her one stock for $10. But now more people want to buy Anaya's stock. So Jackie is able to shop that one single piece of stock around and say, how much will you buy this stock for what? So it says 12 bucks, 12 bucks. I'll buy it for 12 bucks. So Jackie does the smart thing in this case takes the stock that she bought for $10, that one little tiny piece of Anaya's company, she sells it for $12, and what has Jackie gone home with? $2. She's $2 richer than she was at the beginning. Fine, cool. If Jackie owned 10 stocks, she would have made $20. If Jackie owned 100 stocks, she would have made $200. Anaya owns 10 million shares of her stock. What did she just do? When the price of every share went up by $2, what happened to the value of Anaya's 10 million shares? How much did she just, how much did she just make? Jackie's $10, her one stock for $10 became 12, meaning that she earned a profit of $2. Anaya owns 10 million shares of stock. What just happened? What did the price of those 10 million shares just become? Folks, 12 million. Because if the price of one is ten, what's the price of a million? Ten million. It's just Damn. the value of Anaya's stocks. She still holds the same number of stocks. She still holds one million shares of her company, but the value of those shares has gone from ten million to twelve million. Anaya just walked home, if she so chose, with what? What's her profit? Two million that she has made two million dollars. Now, Anaya doesn't have twelve million dollars laying in a, you know, a room somewhere. It's not in her. It's not in a bank. It's not in a mattress. Where is the value of her? Why do we say she's worth twelve million dollars? Her company is worth $12 million. If she wanted $12 million in cash, what would she have to do? She'd sell her company, which she could do. You know, maybe she's older now. She's been running the company for 30 years. She wants to buy an island somewhere. 
She can sell her company. I have no idea. Companies do it all the time. That you know, when, when so for example, when um when Facebook bought Instagram a couple of years ago, they paid billions of dollars. So the founder of Instagram, Mark Zuckerberg, gave the founder of Instagram billions of dollars so Mark Zuckerberg could own Instagram. And the founder of Instagram went living the rest of his life on some island somewhere. Um, that's how stock works. This is how you get wealthy. No one in the country is wealthy who earns a salary. You can have a nice middle class life on a salary, but wealth does not come from salary. Wealth comes from investment. Now, here's the problem. Let's go back to our original share of stock. Jackie buys the share of stock for $10, but you know what? That big move out to California, it doesn't work. C's candy is already out in California. Anaya's, people in California like C's candy. They, Anaya's chocolate shop's all open and not a lot of people go. People say, I like this, I don't, I don't like Anaya's candy shop. And those, most of those stores in California either fail or end up barely eking out a little bit of profit. What's going to happen to the demand for her stock? It's going to go down. And when you demand less of something, what happens to its cost? Oh, it decreases. It decreases. If I demand less of something, if you say, you know, 100 bucks a notebook, 100 bucks a notebook, who the hell is going to demand a notebook at 100 hours? But if I say, I'll give you a notebook for five bucks, what's going to happen to the demand? You're going to rush up here saying, give me a notebook in my five dollars. When Anaya's company doesn't do well, now a person looking to sell that piece of stock, anyone, anyone want it for 12? 11, 10, 9, 8? Maybe someone will grab it for six bucks. But now, when I sell that stock for six dollars, what have I lost? I've lost four dollars. Fine if you own one share of stock, but if you're a Naya with your one million shares, all of a sudden your company is now not worth ten million dollars, it's worth six million dollars. And Naya overnight has lost four million dollars. That's how this works. This is the lifeblood of a capitalist economy. Anaya needs people to invest in her company to grow it. That benefits everyone. When Anaya's company grows, more people have jobs, more people can afford more things, which support other companies, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, she has. Right, she has like when she runs her company, she hires every. Um, if if she's the, the the CEO of a Fortune 500 company that deals in the sale of chocolate, and there are Fortune 500 companies that sell chocolate, Nestle. Wait, how many companies? No, Fortune 500 are the 500 biggest companies in the in the oh. country. Hershey, Hershey Nestle. Oh. Yeah, you. Oh, there are lots of huge chocolate companies out there. They all have armies of tax experts and advertising experts and marketing experts and insurance experts and everything that you could possibly imagine under the sun. Quality control experts, government, you know, diversity experts. This is working in corporate America. All right, now we have a sense of what this is. Now I want to talk about the crash of 1929. In order to do that, I want to put you guys in a in some different contexts here. Okay. Over here, you guys, these two tables, you are factory workers. Okay? Factory workers in Anaya's chocolate factory. Hey boss. <laughs> you guys, these two tables, 
You are ordinary middle class savers, all of whom are employed by, so you're not the factory workers, you're the ad people and the marketing people and the managers, you're the middle class white collar workers for a nice chocolate factory. You guys are a group of four young friends who want to start your own chocolate company one day. All right? So hang on to your roles. Keep your roles in mind. All right. In the 1920s, in the 1920s, the stock market had been going like this. And we human beings, part of the funny thing about us is we imagine that if something is going like this for a little bit of time, it is going to go like this forever. 2008, house prices have been going up, 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 up. They obviously must be going up, 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 up forever. I will buy this little tiny house for $600,000. And then when the market crashed, it's damn bad for me. It was good if you wanted to buy a house. It was great if you wanted to, it was great for us when we wanted to buy a house. It sucked for everybody who owned a house. No, right. You, right. If you buy it for six hundred and no one will pay more than five, you can't. You can't even pay off your mortgage by selling your house, and that's what leads to bankruptcy and a lot of bad things. But if you're in the market to buy and you have good credit, that was a gold mine, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, to buy a house. This is what's going on with stock in the 1920s, and then by 1928, 1929, it starts to climb at a ridiculously high rate. A couple rules were changed. First of all, in the 1920s, stock, here's our rich, the reason, I, you, you guys are the rich company owners of Anaya Chocolate, okay, that's your life. Chocolate, Anaya. Chocolate, Anaya. Little French, like. <laughs> yeah, a Hershey song. But you have to remember, Hershey markets to hundreds of millions of people around the world. So if you decide to stop eating, stop eating Hershey, it's not make a damn difference. If five million people decide to stop, then it makes a difference. All right. And they're, they're, they're diversified into things well beyond chocolate. Like, it was never the no, not, not okay. the, like the, well, that's not necessarily true. And we're going to kind of see what happens. All right, so we got there's a lot. So we got to get our, ourselves through this, guys. The first thing, buying stock used to be something that was solely in the realm of the wealthy. These guys over here would buy and sell and deal in stock, but the 1920s, living uh, standards of livings are going up, people are making more money, so middle class people like you guys, my white collar workers, are starting to purchase stock. That you see how rich Anaya is getting on it, and you're like, gee, if I put $100 in, that could be $200 a month from now. That's a good deal. That's something that's going on. So we are expanding the pool of people working in the stock market, or investing in the stock market, which is driving more money into stocks, which is driving the price of stocks even higher. Another problem, a significant problem, is something called buying on margin. Now what that means is this. Here's Aurelia. Aurelio is kind of a lower level manager. He makes a nice salary. Not so much, but he's a nice middle class life. He wants to invest in stock, but he doesn't have the money to do it. Buying on margin allows Aurelio to pretty much buy stock on a credit card. It allows Aurelio to take, for example, um, It allows Aurelio, for example, to, let's say the stock costs $50. Aurelio could buy it for $20. He buys it on the margin for $20. When will he pay that loan off? When does Aurelio assume he will have that money to pay off the $30 that he borrowed? 
He borrowed $30. When will Aurelio pay for that? When he gets $20. <laughs> well, obviously when he gets money. When is he going to get money? When he works. When he gets paid. No, 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 no. His salary is not... Is that what I sell? Like that when you sell your stock for... More. That Aurelio, or that, that Aurelio has been watching this thing go like this, and he says, you know what I'm going to do? When this stock reaches 80, or 90, when the stock reaches 90, says Aurelio, I'll sell it for 90, which gives me a $40 profit. I'll pay back my loan of 30, and I walk away with a $10 profit. Easy as pie. I'll take that $10 profit and use it to buy another stock on another margin. This is awesome as long as what keeps happening? As long as the price keeps going up. But, yes. Well, then he has a little bit of a problem. So he, has to wait until he has to hold it. Well, here's the problem. Someone lent him that $30. Maybe it was the bank. And the bank says, you owe me the $30 within two years. Well, if that stock price doesn't get up that high in two years, the bank's going to be knock, 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 where's my $30? Aren't going to take it? Eventually, they can take him to court and garnish his wages and take his property if he doesn't pay back his loan. Yeah, he borrowed $30. He is counting on the market continuing to rise in order to pay off that loan. This is where we are in the middle of 1929. And a lot of people kind of, people who knew what this was all about started looking at this and saying, you know, up, up. They say, Anaya's Chocolate Company, you know, is a good company, but it ain't worth $200 a share. What some people start to see, I did it over here before. Everything that goes up, let's come down. Oh, let's come down. Time, age, for example, does not come down. That sounds so sad. Age, a little less. Let's just go in our knowledge that we will someday die. When people start to say, shh, I'm going to get excited real quick. When people start to say, you know, Anaya's Chocolate Company is not worth $200. If I'm holding stock at $200, what am I going to do? Sell it. Sell it. If I don't think her company is really worth $200, but I can get $200 for it, I'm going to sell it. And then it starts to become this herd mentality. If I sell it, other people start to say, no, Solo kind of knows what he's talking about. He's selling. Maybe I need to sell. And as more and as the demand for Anaya's stock goes down, what happens to the price of Anaya's stock? It goes down. Now, I got in the market right here. I got in the market at 180. If I look up, anyone want to buy this for 190? No. Uh, 185. No. 180. Well, now, if I sell it for 180, I'm not making any money. But if no one's willing to buy it for 180, what do I need to do? I need to lower my price. If I need the money now, 170. 160. 150. I'm losing a ton of money. But if I need to sell this stock and no one's willing to buy it for 200, I just got to keep lowering my price until someone's willing to buy that stock. And if I sell it for 120, I just lost 60 bucks. And then if it continues to fall, basically what happened in October of 1929 was the market crashed. 
that people realized that stocks were way overvalued. And then the herd mentality took over. Sell, 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 sell. And on Monday, the day after my grandmother was born, actually, the market fell by about 25%, and then on Tuesday, it fell by another 25%. The whole market lost half of its value in two days. Well, this has massive... Now, if it had just ended here, Aurelio screwed. There's no way he can pay back his loans on margin. You guys can handle it. You're very wealthy. You are invested in lots of different things. For now, you're okay. You've just lost $20 million, but you got another $20 million, you know, still. But you've lost $20 million, bucks, but you still got $20 million. You're, you ain't hurt that much, okay? You lost half your value, but you're not starving to death. Here's the problem. As the market is crashing, Aurelio is out of money. What's going to happen? <laughs> that kind of that herd that there's so much psychology involved in this that people, when they see the market crashing, are they going to be spending a lot of money? No. 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 All of a sudden, something very interesting happens. People stop buying a nice chocolate. But they don't need a nice so it's tasty. But if you have to make the decision bread and milk versus a nice chocolate, you're going to choose the necessities. So now, now Anaya had a big problem with this. But now she's got an even, even bigger problem because her sales are starting to do this. As Anaya's sales go down, what does she have to do to her staff, both white collar staff and blue collar staff? She has to start firing people. That she's not selling enough chocolate anymore. She's not selling enough chocolate anymore. So she, she's a great owner, but you can't pay people money you don't have. And she says to Christopher and Steph and Daniela and Jill, I'm very sorry, you're unemployed as of this afternoon. And she says to... Um, to Debbie and Lisbeth and Helen and Daniela and Demi, I'm cutting your hours by 20% and your pay by 20%. Now, all right, so hold that for a second. Let's go back over here to Jonathan. Let's go back over here to Jonathan. Question or stretch? Let's go over there to Jonathan. Jonathan is a blazingly average middle manager in this company. Like Coolidge? Coolidge was not blazing average. Ridiculous second, I think you described it as blazingly average. Bizarre. Jonathan looks at this stock market stuff, and Jonathan says, all that stock market stuff is a bunch of crazy stuff. It's like gambling. I don't touch it. It's controlled by weird Jewish Eastern bankers. I'm not involved. And he thinks, he reads all this stuff about the stock market, and he says, yeah, I got it coming to him. All these people trying to make a quick buck off of nothing. Ha, ha, ha. Jonathan is very conservative. Every week, he takes his money. He goes down to the local bank. He deposits his money in the local bank and says, my money is safe in this bank. I'm not risking it in any risky stock market scheme. My money's safe in the bank. Here's the problem. The bank is just as invested in the stock market as anybody else. Banks, in the, that's what banks do. Banks take the money you give them and invest it out. Banks saw this happening, and they should have known better. They didn't, and the banks said, hey, hey, everyone's making a zillion dollars, why not us? And the banks took Jonathan's money and invested it in Anaya's Chocolate Company, and then when Anaya's Chocolate Company, when the stock value plummeted by half, what happened to Jonathan's money? 
gone. Is gone. You can't sue them. For, okay, you win. Where's the money going to come from to pay you? You can't invent money. Jonathan can yell and scream and sue and whatever, and if you said, so, well, give me $20, I don't have $20. You can murder me, but that still is not going to produce $20. So, yeah, we could sue the hell out of him, but so what? That's like saying, you know, the guy who stole your $200, who went to the strip joint with it, and they capture it, you sue him for your $200, okay. He spent it. Where are you going to go? Get it from the dancer? Well, gone, you know? So, Jonathan, Jonathan is smart. Jonathan's reading the paper, and he says, you know, all this stock market stuff, all this companies crashing. Jonathan is going to take a little walk down to the bank. And Jonathan's going to say, the $5,000 savings that I've spent my whole life to save, Jonathan's going to say, give me my money. And the bank, well, they have Jonathan's money. But as Jonathan's, this is where the psychology of it comes in again. When Jonathan's walking down to the bank and his friend, you know, says, his friend Marbella says, hey, Jonathan, where are you going? And Jonathan says, I'm really worried my money's not there in the bank. What's Marbella going to do? She's going to go to the bank, too. Anyone see, ever see Mary Poppins? Yeah. What's that scene of Mary Poppins? That's a run on the bank. When everyone goes to the bank and demands their money out. The bank doesn't keep all your money in. The bank is investing that money. The bank has enough money that if one random person comes in to empty their account, they can do it. You go and you withdraw $100. The bank has that money, but the bank don't have everybody's money. Jonathan's the first online, he gets his money. Marbella's the second online, she gets her money. Lorna's the third one online. By the time Lorna says, give me all my money, what happened? No money. There's no money. And when, the, when there's no money in a bank, the bank shuts down. I don't And Lorna, Lorna just lost all of her life savings. Now Lorna's in a world of hurt because she's lost her life savings. What's happening to her company? going down, and now Anaya's going to say to Lorna, Lorna, I'm very sorry, we've got to let you go. Now Anaya has no job, or Lorna has no job, no savings. And we're living in a country with no welfare, no food stamps, no unemployment insurance, no dis... Lorna's in for a world of hurt. Everyone's in, everyone's in for a world of hurt. Because this, it all works together in on itself. That once Lorna loses her job and Elizabeth loses her job and you guys lost your jobs, what happens to the what happens to the what happens further to the demand for chocolate? It's gonna be less and less. Less and less people can afford chocolate which means less and less people are going to buy chocolate, which means Anaya now has to fire more people. Why doesn't she what? What did you say? What? I thought she said something. So, like, for example, if you had money in the bank, it crashed, you can't get it back. Can you get the stock market gets back up and then take No, because the bank closes. So it won't be the bank goes out of business. There is no bank. If the bank doesn't have its money to give you, the bank is bankrupt. It's done. Well, here's the next problem. This is what I want to bring you guys in. So we're seeing economic activity grind to a halt. Companies are laying off workers. People are stopping buying things. People are losing their savings. The market is crashing. Oh, even now. And now Anaya, she's in trouble. She says, oh my god, i got to sell my mansion. Well, what's going to be the problem with that? Who the hell is going to buy it? There are not enough rich people left to buy Anaya's second mansion. What do you mean that's what you get? How many jobs did she provide for people? Millions. This was not her fault. She's merely responding to rational economics. If she can't pay you, she can't pay you. You know, it's not like she's this evil person. She can't give you money she doesn't have. Well, here comes 
The young foursome who make really tasty chocolate, they look at Anaya's company that is failing, and what do they say? They lost them. Oh, but you can't. Why not? Because what do you need to start a business? From where? Nowhere. How do you start a business? Where do you get money from? Loans. Loans from a bank. Which is now closed. So not only, not only does the bet, what really caused the depression was the bank failures, which came about due to the market crash, but what really made it bad for ordinary people was the bank failures. Lorna, who lost her life savings, the young, the entrepreneurs who couldn't get loans. How about everyone who wanted to buy a house? No one could, if, if you can't, if there's no one there to give you a home loan, you can't buy a house. You can't buy a house, no one has a job constructing the house. No one has a job putting in the wiring. No one has a job putting in the heating. No one has a job cleaning. The, like, so all of these economic things spiral in on each other. And by 1932, the country is in a world of hurt. That most of the banks have closed. People who still had money kept it under their mattresses only spent it on necessities. If you're only spending your money on necessities, what happens to everyone's job that's not dependent on necessities? It's gone. Throughout the country, the unemployment rate by 1932 was anywhere from about 25 to 30 percent. One in three people about had no work. Millions of banks had closed. Um, those people who still did have jobs saw their hours and wages cut drastically. And this was something that affected middle class people, working class people, wealthy people, everyone. Um, and in 1932, there's a presidential election, the people are calling out, and remember also, we're going to talk about Hoover tomorrow. Hoover's no laissez-faire conservative at all. Hoover does all this different government intervention stuff. Roosevelt just does it times 10. Um, and we're going to see what Roosevelt tried to fix, to stimulate the economy. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. So where I want you to, I mean, this, first of all, it's, it's a good thing to know. The crash, the banks, buying on margin, et cetera, et cetera. And how really, I want you to be able to link all the different threads of of what happened to cause this economic catastrophe in 1932. Jill, what's your question? No, I was just thinking about how the rest of the Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to get it. 1935. Social Security, yeah. Any other questions? So, the